Welcome back everybody. Today let's talk about a little bit of behind the scenes things that go on during some of my builds which is the making of uh, custom circuit boards which I use a lot because even though I can buy a lot of off-the-shelf boards and they do a lot of stuff they don't always fit in the spaces that I need and sometimes they don't do exactly what I need them to do so it helps to be able to build your own if, if you need to. It's not that complicated or expensive but it, it, there are a few things required. In this case we're making a board that goes behind these cutouts to hold the buttons uh, for the BMO gaming console and what I did is I made a, a schematic and then I laid out the board there's other things that go into uh, doing it namely you need to uh, have a reflow oven which will melt the solder there's other ways to do it you can kind of look that up on YouTube as well I use a reflow oven but this is a pretty simple board it doesn't really have any fancy integrated circuits it mostly has buttons and a few connectors. I have two USB micro connectors and a couple of uh, Pico blade connectors. So the first thing you got to do is get a, a stencil made for the various solder pads and this is made out of metal. There's, there's other plastics and things that can be done. Um, theoretically you can make your own. Uh, I had a shop do this for me. Turn around for all this. You can get a board made in about a week. These take about a week so it's a fairly fast turnaround to get these things. But the first thing you want to do is hold the PCB down securely. And they make these cool little frames but the problem is this frame is probably too big to hold this securely so I decided not to use that. I just use old PCBs that I don't need anymore and just frame it with that and you put the stencil over and you just kind of move it around and then magically which is kind of cool all the all the pads line up in the slots and kind of a neat effect when that happens and then I have this piece of tape and I just lock it down really securely now I got this sort of hinge door thing which I can do multiple ones if I want that one's slightly misaligned, so I'll do it again. Not a big deal. And that looks better. Lock it down. Now we gotta put solder paste on here. That's there's different ways of doing that. You these pads are big enough you might be able to get away doing it with a syringe, but these um, micro USB is a very fine pitch and that, that's a little more complicated so I, I'm using the stencil and solder paste technique and there's different types of solder paste this is what's called T4 which I would typically use um, because the, the solder pads are, are pretty big on here except these micro USB is a pretty fine pitch and so I'm going to use a, a, a T3 which means it has smaller uh, grains of, of of solder in there so you get less likely to get solder bridges across the various pads for the buttons it wouldn't be a problem but for these these micro USB connectors I, I've had it sort of blob up during the uh, the heating process so T3 pretty simple concept here just take a glob of this stuff and just run it down the side like that and then you need a solder spreader and there's nothing better than an old hotel card key old um, gift cards don't throw those out they're good for spreading solder things like that uh, so you just put it on here and run it across uh, with a little bit of pressure downward I kind of wiggle it a little bit and make sure it goes in just kind of keep it at an angle and that looks pretty good. Take some of the excess off. And now we flip it up. And what we want to see is that it's not slopping outside the solder pads. 
especially on the micro USB. That, that's the most critical part. You're not going to get any solder jumpers on these big pads. If it goes outside a little bit, it's not a big deal. Uh, the solder won't stick to the, to the mask. It, it'll find its way usually to the pad, but if, if it's a very fine pitch, that could be a problem. So put the excess back in. Of stuff it is not cheap. However, there's only so much you can do to get it off. And cover that up. This stuff ideally is supposed to be refrigerated. I'm not about to stick it in my refrigerator, but it has a shelf life of a couple of months outside of the refrigerator, so I, I can usually use most of it up by then. Now comes the fun part, putting the pieces on. So, let's take one side of this off, get this guy out of here. Be careful not to touch the solder paste. There we go. Just take that off all together for now. See if everyone can see that. All right, so, Let's start with the buttons. Buttons are usually the easiest part. These are little tactile buttons. I like these ones. They actually have a uh, different force settings on them. This one is a 0.5 Newton. It's a pretty easy button to push. They go up to like 1.2 Newtons for um, the pressure. Um, that's a little too much, I think, for this gaming thing. And then I like to use tweezers for everything. These two style work best um, for putting stuff on. I like the very sharp points and they grab well. And you just grab it and kind of eyeball it until you put it down. And then give it a little bit of tap and it's on there. And you just go around and do them all. When I'm placing these pieces, the, I go all the way down, I can hit the table and I pick it up. Then I go all the way down and I hit the PCB with the tips of the tweezers and then I just let go. I don't like to drop it on there because you're going to miss the pads. If it's not perfectly aligned, you can nudge them a little bit on these bigger guys. This one's a little bit off. You can kind of knock it down a little bit. These bigger pads, that's okay. I give it a little bit of tap to seat it. Alright. Well, these, these connectors are kind of in front of these buttons. So let's do the connectors. Same process. Grab your connector. A little bit different. I can't really grab it on both sides, so I do. Um, you can see, it kind of, it is an awkward thing to grab onto. Just kind of get used to holding it and putting it down. And then drop this one. I will drop a little bit because I couldn't bottom it out. But again, the solder pads are big enough where I can eyeball it. But it is a, these these are a little trickier to do. And by drop it on it's like we're just barely hitting the solder paste and letting go. But again, I do have to nudge it if that's the case. As I said I rarely get it to nail right on top of the pads. That's fine, it's looking good. Let's put the remainder of the buttons on. These are really good buttons for gaming. They do make through hole versions, but I, I don't like soldering all those through hole connections. But if you wanted to make a board that uses a through hole version, you wouldn't have to go through as much of this. I don't think they make through hole versions of these micro. That's the, really right. I went all solder pad on the thing. Um, there are through hole versions of Pico Blade connectors. Now these are tricky. One, 
they got these tabs that go all the way through the board, so I can't just drop it on there right now. I'm going to have to uh, elevate it slightly so those don't get poked out by the table. Now there are alignment holes here to help you out. But they're not perfect. And if, if you slap around too much, and there's a little bit of play in those holes, uh, you will get solder bridges. The T3 helps out in avoiding that to some degree, but I'm trying to figure out what the best way to grab this thing is. Maybe like that. And I just aim for the, the holes there. Hope for the best. Fortunately, the, the prongs are a little longer. I haven't tapped that one down yet, but I will in a second. So, this guy. There. So I believe those two are seated. Then I'm going to give them a little bit of a tap to completely get them down there. I will smash the solder paste. Now comes the fun part. Trying to determine if um, you screwed up. The magnifying glass helps out with that. And what I do, just kind of rock it up there and take a peek. That looks pretty good. I don't think I got any solder bridges going. Okay, I, I don't want to lay it flat again because what's going to happen is it's going to pop that up. Missing one thing here. back. Flashlight. I, I do like to hit this with a good amount of light from different angles just to see if all the pads are lined up. And they, they do look good. And then you can magnify it. Check it out. Good. Yeah, you want to make sure you, you these, these are taps down because they can float when it melts. I, I've had things shift, especially USB um, connectors that aren't tabbed down can move and I don't like that happening, especially it almost certainly will give you a, a shorted circuit. This looks good, so the next step is to take it to the reflow oven and cook it and then test it out. Welcome back. Um, so this is my reflow oven and you might think it looks suspiciously like a toaster oven and it is but it's been heavily modified um, it has a lot more electronics on it it's got a servo for opening the door for cooling and also has this much more powerful heating element in it and a ton of insulation um, and a bunch of electronics to regulate the various heat there's now three heating elements and you can adjust those based on a pre-programmed curve that you're looking for to melt the solder. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty complicated process. So you take a oven and then you can buy these kits and modify it. Uh, it works pretty darn well, I think, uh, for what we're trying to do here. So I put my board on this plate. I've elevated it slightly with a couple of spacers because of the the standoffs I told you about earlier and I just put it in here close it up then like I said it's already pre-programmed so I booted this cold so I, I knew the, the temperature state of it but it tells you the temperature of the inside so you want to make sure it's, it's below you know 50 degrees at least but even, even cooler than that possibly before you touch anything inside there so keep an eye on the temperature so I've already picked the uh, profile I'm going to use, so we'll start the reflow and it's just a matter of waiting after this point. Computer does the rest.
So now it says we can remove the boards, um, but 100 degrees Celsius is pretty hot, so I use these silicone grabbers to make sure I don't do anything dangerous. And then I just offload the board up there. Put this back. Let that keep cooling. Board's still pretty hot, but there it is. So we can go uh, let it cool a bit. They'll, they'll cool much quicker now that it's outside. Uh, but once it's cooled down, we'll go check for uh, shorts and make sure it worked well. All right, welcome back. Here is our board cooled off and ready to go. So this is a pretty simple board. The only thing I'm really concerned about is whether there's any shorts on the USB port. This is the USB port connector right there. So I'm just going to check those pins to see if they're, uh, they're shorted. To that I use this continuity tester. Who is if it to, text continuity gives you a sound so all I'm going to do is touch it to one of the pins and then check the rest of them and there's no sound I'll just move on to the next pin that's because I hit the first pin but check with the second pin sometimes I'll do that just to make sure that this solder joint's good, and then I'll check the rest. But it looks like there's no problems. So that should work fine for the buttons. Um, it's not really a big deal. The way they work, I think, is I think this is ground here, and then. You touch one of these and one of these should sit down. Yeah, so that would be the little green button for, for BMO. You can go through and check them all, but th those pads are so large there's no way that there's a solder problem there. So there you have it. This is a little board here that will go inside um, here and allow us to have buttons that are usable for BMO. So you can kind of see the little buttons inside there. There will be 3D printed corresponding color buttons that work, but uh, that's what you do when you need to make a board that just can't find on the market. You just build your own.